Hey there, guys. Another Sunday, another you know what time it is. Should you make X as an alt, this time on good old War Dancer. Um, War Dancer uh, is a beloved class by many, but you have to keep in mind that this take is for a generic alt for most people. Um, a lot of people don't put the most love and care into their alts. Do I think that means this character can't be an alt? No. And it's like I stress in my Soul Fist video um, from a long, long time ago. Should you make a Soul Fist as an alt? Probably not, because you're probably not going to put enough love and care into the class to make it truly shine. But if you're aware of the limits of the class and you understand the specific things you need to do in order to make the class feel good, then you absolutely can make it as an alt. That being said, let's get into War Dancer. What is War Dancer? What 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 she do? Why do I got donuts on my wrists? My fists in my wrists. Uh, in short, she is a melee punchy lady. Um, one of the melee punchy ladies in the game. Uh, he has two different specs. One is focused more on um, sort of the physical punchy punch, and the other is on sort of energy blasty punchy punches. Um, let's just first intention versus esoteric. I am playing esoteric, which is the energy skill spec. Um, my build is obviously very ghetto. This is one of my very early alts, but this is plenty. Uh, you only need SO1, and Adrenaline is a very efficient plus one, plus two, you know the drill. Uh, so this build looks ghetto as frick, but it's not too bad. Uh, in any case, I am missing quite a bit of power, because, I mean, it's a 3x3 three three plus one, plus one, which, again, not the greatest, but still. Uh, I will say, this class needs tripods, and it really needs its relic set. Uh, two of the things that I did not have for the longest time in this class. Now with the tripod update, I do have some level 3, level 4 tripods. So that has improved the efficiency of this class quite a bit. Uh, but obviously it's 1415, where she has been parked for many, many moons, and no relic set. So I'm still missing the other major thing that makes this class feel good. With all that being said, what is War Dancer's identity skill? It is the SO Bubbles. Um, basically, you use skills, you generate your esoteric meter. You fill up the esoteric meter, your skills do more damage. Your, um, esoteric skills. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Uh, let me swap over to my single target preset. So, this is the build that I've been running for my entirety playing this class. Um, double spender. I probably should have been running single spender, but I liked having blast formation because I think it's a cool skill. That's really all there is to it. Um, I could have run one spender with blast formation, but again, that's neither here nor there. One of the upsides to this class that I will straight up say immediately is there's a lot of different builds and choices you can make with it. You can run entropy set you can run full dominion you can run i've even seen some people run like a weird nightmare entropy sort of mix i'm not sure why i've seen people use dominion nightmare i've seen people use primarily entropy dominion there's a lot of things you can do with the relic set choices so if you enjoy mixing and matching and trying different things this might be a good class for you another thing to note there is a lot of different ways you can distribute the stats because of that. Um, esoteric is primarily swiftness with some spec you need to have. Reason being is spec increases your esoteric meter gain uh, and obviously it increases your esoteric skill damage, but the meter gain is the super important thing because you want to be dumping your esoteric skills with four bubbles for maximum amount of damage when you use your esoteric skills. Uh, and obviously you want to be dumping them during the Wind Whisper um, window because it makes you do a lot more damage thanks to ready attack. 
very reminiscent of Soul Fist. A lot of classes have this mechanic. I'm sure you've noticed by now if you've played the game for a while. It is these classes designed around small burst windows where you're designed to quickly dump your main skills and then generate back up again. Uh, that being said, first intention is the other engraving for this class. Uh, you can see esoteric. It increases the maximum number of esoteric orbs you can have, and then it increases the esoteric orb damage um, bonus. First intention removes the esoteric meter entirely and turns it more into like a just kind of smash on the keyboard kind of play. It is a swiftness primarily class. But again, it has a lot of alternative options with its relic set choices as well. There's a lot of different ways you can Dominion, Entropy, Dominion, kind of mix and match. Basically, if your class uses Dominion in this game, or can use Dominion, you can do a lot of mixing and matching. That is to say, this is a pro if you like that kind of thing, and it is a negative if you dislike that kind of thing. That is something to heavily keep in mind. I do not think this is a class you should make if you are not going to push it to Relic Set. I have regretted making this character since the day I made her. Uh, I did not want another martial artist when I made her. I made her because I kept the name. I, I was saving the name Bug, and at the time I didn't realize um, you couldn't delete characters and immediately reuse the name. I later found out that you could if they were under a certain level, but blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. So I ended up with a war dancer. Why did I make a war dancer? I don't know, man. I make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Um, but do I regret it? At this point, no. I quite enjoy the war dancer. And again, it's because the tripods. The tripod update allows me to get some tripods, so I don't feel as bad. I'm able to have some meter generation. I have damaged tripods, so it doesn't feel as bad. Um, I will say this class is heavily reliant on tripods, uh, uh, specifically the ones that increase your meter generation, like on Roar of Courage, Sky Shattering Blow, I believe has one. Uh, where's the other one? There is another one, isn't there? Ah, yes, Moonflash Kick, sorry, not Sky Shattering Blow. Moonflash Kick is your other big, super esoteric meter genning ability, uh, as well as Roar of Courage. Um, well, that was quite a ramble. That is all to say, what your basic rotation is, is regardless of what you decide to do with the class, um, you just need to remember this thing, these two things. Try to dump your skills with maximum amounts of esoteric orbs and make sure you dump it within the Wind Whisper window, because... This gives you a lot of your damage, uh, and you do have ready attack on uh, Sky Shattering Blow, but you probably don't want to be using this because it's half of the ready attack damage of Wind Whisper. Uh, the main use for the Sky Shattering Blow ready attack is for energy combustion. After like, you can see down here, 18 seconds, this will explode for damage, so you can preemptively kind of proc ready attack for the explosion damage on this because you don't want to wind whisper just for that um that kind of deal uh, that's like a minor sort of thing there's a lot more to this class obviously these videos are just to give you a generic overlook of the class and not to get into the nitty gritty um just to see if you are interested in playing the class or not so i'll run through like a trial rotation this is just kind of what i do nothing crazy But, especially with my gear level, it's really not too crazy. You can also do this animation cancel thing, but I don't usually do it. Like I said, when I play this character, I'm very chill. I just kind of turn my brain off and let it go. But you'll see there's not much really to it that I'm thinking about when I'm playing it. I just try to proc ready attack off Sky Shattering Blow for anything that I can hit. I win Whisper, and then I Esoteric Tornado, then I Roar of Courage if it's up, and then I Blast Formation. And you just want to make sure Energy Combustion's always ticking. And then outside of that, you want to keep generating your bubbles. 
if I had better gear, um, I would be able to get a four bubble for blast formation. But with my current gear, Roar of Courage just doesn't give me four bubbles. I'm just not quite there. But you can kind of see, there's nothing crazy about it. And I think that about sums up everything I have to say about the class, uh, other than do I recommend it. And I think by now, if you've been following along, you'll surmise that I don't recommend it unless there's something about the class that you truly like and compels you to play it. Um, and that you understand that is a it is one of the more heavily invest into alts um, in the game. I think that's kind of the theme for the majority of the martial artists uh, in the game. They're not the best alts, and they require heavy investment usually, whether it be relic set tripods or specific like spec breakpoints or whatnot. Um, but if you understand that and you like the skill choices, the relic set choices you have, the stat distribution choices you have with this class, I definitely think you should give it a try because there's a good reason why people like this class. And it is because it is a very powerful and diverse class that can adapt and change to different situations very easily. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Uh, of course, like it if you liked the video. Dislike it if you dislike it. Leave a comment down below. And of course, subscribe if you've made it this far and you haven't already. 850 isn't a real goal, but it's a pseudo goal that I have now set in my mind before the end of the year. If we can hit it, it will make me get a little bit more serotonin and maybe dopamine. It's been me, ya boy, brother Chris. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace, love, and apple grease. Bye.